Hey guys, I am Ken Ross here. I'm a business consultant that specializes in reducing costs for businesses by looking at their essential expenses. And today, boy, I have a doozy today. It's actually gonna be a two-part series because I have so much information to cover. But let me give you the genesis of it. And the genesis is vendors do not care about you. I'm sorry, they just don't. I actually had a problem where my AT&T service experienced a very major outage and I want to get into some of the details of that but first let me kind of give you a little background so I switched to AT&T internet had it for about two years and I really wanted to invest in um, just having a very reliable connection and fiber AT&T fiber is, is, is specifically what I have it's very reliable in the sense that you're using actual fiber optics you know to your house and you have a very fast and reliable connection so with that being said why did I experience such a catastrophic a uh, accident when it comes to my setup I'm gonna try to get into some of that I'm gonna do some I guess speculation because I don't have all the information when it comes to what it is that actually happened but I will at least give you some of my understanding and my expertise when it comes to how fiber optics work what in this particular instance I was able to find out factually and what it is that um, I actually did some reconnaissance what it is I actually did uh, to to confirm some of those things so let's get into it let's talk about my setup I have AT&T fiber like I said and what that entails is I actually have a physical fiber optic line that is connected to my home and the way that works is AT&T takes the fiber line, a physical strand of fiber optic ca cable, and connects it to my home. That goes to a device that they control. That device takes the fiber optic signal and switches it over to something that inside the house you're able to use. And that something in the house uses category 5 or category 6 cabling. And I'm sure you've seen it or are familiar with Category 5 cabling. Category 6 or 6E is what it's like to be uh, referred to as is the type of cable that you have connecting to all of your devices in your home. So the way the fiber works is you get a fiber channel to your house, switches to Category 6. That goes to what they call a gateway. And AT&T provides you with a physical piece of networking equipment that... In, a, in some sense, you manage or control, right? You have access to it. You're able to, to uh, reset it. You're able to change some of the settings. So you, you may not own that piece of device, but in some sense, you take ownership of it. It's part of your network. And then from there, that gateway or that device can broadcast a wireless signal, or you can roll out your own. So in my particular instance, what I have is I have Cat6 from, you know, from the fiber to Cat6, CAT6 to the gateway, and then I roll out what's called a mesh network. And I have Nighthawk mesh networking. There's these little devices you can put all over your house to extend your range on your, on your wireless signal. And it's a very reliable, very fast wireless signal because of, of the mesh nature of it. And I'm extending what the gateway would give me because the gateway doesn't have very good networking. <laughs> To be honest, that's just my opinion. And, and in my experience, the mesh network has done far better for my uh, household and for my area that I'm, I'm using than what is out of the box that the gateway has. So for anybody who's looking for a way to enhance their wireless experience, you should really use a mesh network. You should invest in a, a good one and maintain it. Make sure it's configured correctly. Uh, that being said, you can also still run what's called a wired network. And if you have a house that's wired and you have a wired network, what you're going to then have from the gateway is you're going to have a switch that controls all of your connections to all your ports in your house. So if you have physical networking cables in your house and each one of those jacks in your, in your room has a cable that comes from that room to a centralized place. And my home actually is wired for Cat 6 or Cat 5. I don't, I don't know exactly which one. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, the point I'm making, though, is, is that I'm not able to leverage that network because of where my gateway is. My switch is actually closer to a garage area um, that I would have to put 
all of the networking equipment in there, but my gateway is in one of my, my rooms in my house, a physical bedroom in one of my bedrooms in the house. So I would actually have to run cabling from that room to where the switches are that would enable all the ports. I've actually, instead of having that problem and, and having to solve that problem, I came up with a separate solution. And that solution is to roll out what we call a Mocha internet solution. And that is basically you uh, broadcast your networking signal over your existing coax network. You use the, the already existing coax network that you have in your house and you hook into it and then you provide one of the Mocha endpoints, the internet signal, and that internet signal is then shared amongst all the other signals in the house. So it is a very creative, very viable solution if you don't have physical networking in your house. You don't have Cat5 cable like I have all over my house, and then you don't have the problem of having to have your internet signal being broadcast or being close to the location of where you're switching all of your internet to. So. Uh, with that in mind, I'd like to get into what I think actually happened. The very first thing that happened to me is sometime in the afternoon, I'd say about 2.30 in the afternoon on a Thursday, I believe it was. Yeah, it was Thursday. I received a text message from AT&T. Hey, there's an outage in your area. We're going to deal with it. It'll be two to three hours. And so I was like, great. My internet's down. I'm going to have to do something. Uh, to kind of compensate for that. So I immediately brought out my, f my wireless phone and said, oh, I'm going to set up a hotspot. I'm going to try to use my wireless hotspot feature on my phone. Done it before in the past. Typically something that is fairly reliable. If you have a good wireless connection, you can connect a few devices to your phone. No problem, right? And so I, I attempted to start to do that. So I tethered a few devices to, the, uh, to that, one of them being my laptop computer expecting my laptop to have an internet connection, and that internet connection was not working. I got no page response, nothing, um, which raised my level of concern in the sense that I know that in order for a wireless provider to be able to provide you internet, they still have to be connected to the internet. And given that AT&T is experiencing an outage, this outage could extend much further than AT&T's control in the sense that this could be a major problem with the network in this area. So no sooner did I figure that out, I received another text message. Hey, this is AT&T. Uh, we know you have an outage in this area. It looks exactly the same as the previous message, but the only difference was the time. Now, instead of a few hours, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 or 14 hours. And I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, what uh, the text messages that I actually received and that was rather shocking that I was able to receive these two text messages back to back so close together uh, with these updates to know that it's going to take much longer in, in the estimated amount of time for me to get service back. And so with that being said, I knew that using a wireless hotspot was probably useless because not only am I experiencing this issue, but potentially hundreds of other people are experiencing this issue as well as potentially a wireless provider because wireless providers, like I said, they have to provide an internet connection to the internet. They have a physical connection to the internet. And if they're using fiber for that connection, it's possible that their fiber connection is also experiencing this issue. So that is where the complication lies in this particular instance is that I really do feel like what was going on at the time and I was, I was eventually confirmed uh, of this particular issue, is that there is a major outage in the fiber optic network. So then let me tell you what happens next. So um, I go through the rest of that day without internet. And um, not that this is a, a, a third world problem, right? It's a first world problem. Most people without internet can deal. And I was able to deal, and my family was also able to deal. But in addition to that, my entertainment, you know, for most people in their house, their entertainment comes from streaming services or even cable, uh, cable television services. Well, none of these services were working because all of my entertainment so sources were streaming services. So I have streaming television. I don't know if you've seen my video and I'll post a link to it actually on this side of the screen. I got it right this time. No, on this side of the screen, this side of the screen. 
Yeah, it's on this side of the screen. To my woes with AT&T TV, which is actually a streaming service that allows you to see cable channels. There, it's a cable network basically of streaming channels, very similar to like a YouTube TV or something. So I wasn't able to even access those channels because I need an internet package. I need an internet service provider. So I had to make do for the day. Going into the next day, very much knowing that by three, four, five o'clock in the morning, my service should be restored because, hey, they gave, gave me an estimate, 12 to 13 hours, 14 hours, whatever. I should have internet by then. Fast forward to the next day. I go, wake up the next day. It's a Friday. I actually have to do work. I work from home, uh, do a lot of remote work, maybe even some Zoom conferencing, teleconferencing, totally expecting my internet service to be back, and it wasn't kind of speechless at this point. I don't even know how to explain to you the feeling or the frustration, right? Having an internet service provider tell you an estimated time, expecting those things, relying on those things to actually come through and say, hey, look, I'm giving them more than enough time. I'm going to give them 20 hours instead of 14 hours or 15 hours to get this resolved and, and ever thinking, hey, they're going to actually treat me right and tell me a fair estimate um, was incorrect. Uh, in addition to that, I had no other information. So when I woke up the next day and I didn't have any internet, I was like confused. I was like, hey, well, you said it would be 14 hours. What is going on? So that ultimately spawns another conversation. And that conversation is with support, right? I have to call AT&T now and I have to explain to them, hey, I've been following along. <laughs> I've been more than patient. I haven't bugged you or annoyed you. But I do want some information now because now we're at a place where you've promised the service to be restored at a particular time and that promise is unkept. My first call conversation I said I hear uh, uh, I was talking to them and I actually kept notes like I said I received a refund for one day of service. Actually I received a refund for two days of service and I'll get to that in a minute but they couldn't give me another explanation. They said oh it could be um, another 24 hours or 48 hours till this is resolved. And I asked them, well, what is the issue? Because obviously um, this has been an issue for some time and you guys have been trying to resolve this. I'd like to have an estimate as to when I could expect my uh, internet connection to come back because I work from home a lot, like a lot of people. I also have or had at one point AT&T TV, which is now Direct TV Stream. So I don't have any other source of entertainment or other avenues. In addition to that, I've been trying to use my phone as a, as a tethering device to the internet to use my wireless internet service through my telephone, and that isn't working either. They were unable to give me that. Support doesn't have the information. They aren't able to give me everything that I need to know and be able to reliably make a decision. So that was the place I was in. Say, all right guys I just wanted to show you this quick video here of why this is so complicated when you have outages like the one that I'm experiencing right now like you're just walking along and then you see this thing here here's a buried fiber optic line right here see and if, if you have an outage they have to they have to go in there and they have to look for it okay so my creative solution was probably a creative solution that many people have in the situation that I was in, and that is to go to a Starbucks. Yes, I said it. Use Starbucks internet as a source of internet for the day, right? A lot of folks go there and do business. So I thought, hey, it'd be worth a shot. So I went to my local Starbucks. It was probably about two miles away from my location, um, from my house, my location where I'm using the internet. And... Uh, unfortunately for me, I had the same issue that a lot of other folks were having, and they had the same idea for the same solution. So when I got to Starbucks, there were already a couple of dozen people in the store using the internet, doing their own things. I even had a conversation with someone who was having the same issue and said, hey, look, I have AT&T fiber, um, and I don't have internet right now, and AT&T sucks. And I was like, well... I could fully understand what you're saying because I was experiencing the same problem and I was promised 14 hours ago that I would have internet and 14 hours have passed 
and I still don't have internet. But what I had is something they didn't have. I already had a refund for two days of service and I told that person, hey, you need to seek your refund. You need to call them and tell them this is a major uh, impact to your service and you need, you need to be compensated for that. And that person followed through on that as well to get his refund for his service. So uh, with that, I'm gonna kinda end my story right here. I do have a lot more to the story that I'd love to talk to you in part two, which I'm going to be premiering next year sometime after I get back from my vacation and tell you kind of how all of this ended, right? What happened to my service? When did I ever get my service back? What else did I find? And what in the world is this? There's police up here. We're going to get closer here. But I, I really do believe this is an at and truck right up here. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it right there. That is something I'm going to leave for part two. Would love to uh, have your comments in the comments section below. Have you ever experienced a major outage with your internet service provider? And what did you do? Because what I did is definitely unlike what most people did because I, I've actually had a chance to talk to some people. And I actually went through a lot of different steps here to make sure that in the end, it's a lesson learned for everyone. And I have a takeaway for you in part two that I'd love to, to uh, bring to you on this channel. So stay tuned to this channel. Let other people know about what it is I'm doing out here. I want to share information. I want people to understand that you don't have to take AT&T or any vendor for that matter for their word. You don't have to be in a desert of no information. You can be informed and you have things that you can do to better leverage your provider and what it is that they're giving you and, and give yourself a, a much better experience. So until next time, I am Ken Ross. Would love to see your comments in the comments section below. Would love to hear from, uh, from others who have had similar issues. Please put in that in the comments section below. Please share with your friends and like this video and visit my website, imkenross.com. Until I see you next time, I'll see you around. Stay tuned for part two. You're not gonna wanna miss it.